Have you ever thought about using AI to create your own designs and sell them online? I've been doing this for over a year now. Let me show you the first step, how to turn an idea into a strong, high quality image. Because this is exactly what platforms demand. These are my five steps. Let me briefly tell you that I have been working in the business of design and creation for about 25 years. So I have a bit of experience when it comes to realizing a drawing or illustration with a brush and pencil. I've been familiar with the digital way of working with Coral Draw or Macromedia Freehand practically right from the start, including Adobe InDesign, Illustrator, and of course, Photoshop. I also ran an advertising agency with several employees for over 23 years. If you want to be successful as a designer today, you can no longer avoid artificial intelligence. That's why I can't emphasize enough how important it is to deal with Midjourney, ChatGPT, or others. If we focus for a moment on the area of image creation, sometimes the biggest hurdle is yourself. With so many possibilities, you don't know where to start. Just ask ChatGPT for help, like a good friend. For example, how does it even work? What styles are there? Or how can you optimize images so that the designs you create are not rejected by the platform providers where you want to sell your artwork? At the end of this tutorial, I'll show you two platforms where you can upload your own images to earn some money. So let's start with ChatGPT because I've prepared a few things for you there. Here you can see two images, this one of me and this beach photo. How can you combine these two pictures? That's pretty simple. You just write, use these two images and then the prompt of your choice follows. So you describe the scene, what you want to see. In my case, the prompt was as follows. Use these two images and create a new scene in which I, with the look and feel of an adventurer, am riding a tapir along the beach. We see my typical sweater again. That was step one, fulfilled. Of course, you can also define styles yourself. Just take one or two pictures and write, use a 2400 arcane inspired comic style. Or would you like to realize a different version? Here it is. And then of course, this is particularly interesting. If you are developing things for a younger target group, there are other drawing styles like this one or this one. As you can see, you could almost say, the sky is the limit. You have almost unlimited possibilities to create graphics. Think about it when you have drawn something yourself. And now, upload it to ChatGPT and refine it further. Just describe what you need. In this case, I wanted this picture from Iceland instead of the plain gray background. You could say, ChatGPT is there to help you refine images. The type of image doesn't matter whether it's this blue image, the soccer stadium, or this tree. ChatGPT adds it with absolute prompt precision to your picture. But if you are the one who wants a different approach, that is also possible. Let me just explain this with an example. Go back into ChatGPT and say, hey, I'd like to know what styles there are. What graphic directions do you know? Please also help me to write the finished prompt so that I have an orientation. As you can see here, ChatGPT has defined a lot of political movements, protest groups or trends, including ideological ones. We see national identities or cultural movements. There are also spiritual and fictional styles. You don't have to take notes, by the way. I've copied many of these styles into the description below. Then you can try them out for yourself and build your own story around them. As there are quite a few recognizable art styles, it was also interesting for me to ask ChatGPT to take all the styles and define a single new world style and prompt based on them. You won't believe what ChatGPT did. It didn't say can't do it because it's all contradictory, but it took on the task and implemented this image based on the combination of different, sometimes conflicting styles. And all the more astonishing, it has even defined its own term for this. This is called transcultural hyper-propaganda fusionism. Very exciting. Here you can see again, just have courage and try things out. It works. For demonstration purposes, I chose this South African style. If you also like it, then simply take the next step and test different things. Just take the existing prompt suggestion from ChatGPT. You can see a woman and a man 
here, followed by the style definition and the aspect ratio 5 to 7. For example, instead of a woman and a man, simply write a cute kitten and a puppy in the prompt. This is the result. It's as simple as that. Admittedly, not everyone will like it, but the point I want to make here is use an existing basic style from the, I'll call them, propaganda channels, refine the prompt and the end result will have a completely different effect. You can also just say this style, but with a flower, and then you have this floral result. Of course, you can also define the type of flower. If you don't like roses, just enter tulip. In the next example, I have chosen a very special character. This style embodies the Chinese Cultural Revolution between 1966 and 1976. Here you can also see a woman and a man as a prompt with the style definition. As in the last example, I would rather have a cute kitten and a puppy. Simply replace it and the image is there with the same look and feel, but the message is completely different. The illustration is no longer characterized by politics or possibly negative emotions, but explicitly only by what you choose as image content. Of course, I can do the same with my face. Or we can go back to the scene with the tapir. This, of course, applies to any other of your own pictures. Upload it to ChatGPT and set a condition that this motif should be replicated in a different style. Then you get results like this. I have tested others. Here the Aztec style. Here is a North Korean propaganda style. Or are you interested in the East German socialist propaganda? Let's go. Let's move away from the somewhat somber colours. Then of course you can also stage the whole thing in a very colourful way. Flower power appeals? Here it is. Now let's go one step further. You have identified a style that you like and, this is very important, it also works with other image content then start thinking big. Everything you see here are just typical examples to explain the concept. For example, a sunflower in the style of the flower power movement of the 1960s. This is the result. Or if you want a field full of forget-me-not flowers, this is the result. The entire arrangement can also be realised with an allium flower. A brief tip in passing. Customers like series of pictures. So don't think about 100 different styles, but a few styles with different interesting concepts. We have now created an image and are ready to upload it to the platform for sale. But now the challenge begins. If we download images from ChatGPT, for example, their quality is rather low. In other words, rather limited. What options do we have then? First of all, there are the well-known software solutions for enlarging images. I would mention Topaz AI or Magnific AI, for example. Or, in some cases, this is absolutely essential. You can use AI software that raises the sharpness of the image to a very exclusive level. I'm talking about Vectorizer AI, for example. Let me illustrate the entire process in Adobe Photoshop. Here we see the image I received from ChatGPT. If we take a closer look, it looks very blurred. In any case, the platform administrator will tell you that this is not printable. We want the highest possible quality for our customers. We can't accept this image. If you then receive such messages, I know what I'm talking about, then the disillusionment is great because the whole image creation process, the upload and the time invested, were in vain. You are now forced to start all over again. If I now use Topaz Gigapixel AI, for example, the following happens. This means the quality of the image, let me go back again briefly so that you can see the difference, gets better. But if we take a closer look, the quality is still limited. Even with Topaz AI, which is actually already a very good program, I even spoke directly to the colleagues at Displate. They confirmed to me that the machine goes into great detail during the inspection process and evaluates the data. Let me go back again. This is the original image from ChatGPT without modification. This is the image, modified with Topaz AI. As I've already had a few problems with this, I've now said, I don't want my work to be constantly rejected. It quickly turns into frustration. I have now adjusted the image using Vectorizer, and you can see what has happened. The graphics are razor sharp. Let me put it bluntly, even the ugliest design now has a chance of being accepted because the machine says it's printable. I'm not interested in aesthetics. The use of Vectorizer is of course not suitable for every image. If I have a real photo, then these hard edges are of no use to me because the image literally becomes unusable from the graphic perspective. 
you just have to weigh things up here. Let's look at it again, I'll zoom out a little. The image is still the same in substance, but it's razor sharp. This is the Topaz AI, and this is ChatGPT. So make absolutely sure that you don't use the first result at the end of the creation process, but refine it further. And only then upload it to the platform. If you generate your images via mid-journey, it's much easier. I'll show you the image from ChatGPT again. It's blurred and very unattractive. I created exactly the same image via mid-journey. We can see that this spongy effect is significantly reduced. If I bring my experience, for example with Displate, back in here, then I know that this quality will not be enough. The platform administrator will also reject this image. You also have to rework it after the upscaling process, because these details in particular are unusable from the machine's point of view. If I use the new dash dash Q4 parameter when creating the image in mid-journey, we get a better result in many ways. Sometimes it is marginal, but it is an invaluable positive effect, especially with gradients and small details. I have now enhanced the image with the highest mid-journey quality with Topaz AI. The result is now absolutely great. Even the critical gradients and small details are there. This is particularly important for photos because that's where we need them. Let me now show you two more platforms where I upload designs myself. One is Displate and the other is Euro Posters. In the USA, this platform is called AB Posters. In the UK, it's called UK Posters. You can create a profile on both platforms and apply. Once approved, you can then upload your images, which you have created via Midjourney, ChatGPT, Ideogram, Leonardo, or similar and change to a suitable format and then offer them for sale to a large audience. Add suitable keywords to the design and it will be easier to find. It's actually quite visually appealing. Visitors to the platform can also experience the designs in three dimensions. This gives you the opportunity to earn some extra money on the side. Be sure, I have already sold a few posters here. There are different styles and different tastes. You have to be a bit careful with Euro posters because they have relatively strict rules when it comes to AI. We also see illustrations here. The earnings at Euro posters are lower than at Displate, but both platforms offer a nice option to present your unique artwork to a large audience. Thank goodness there are different tastes, and maybe you have the ability to inspire many people with your designs, and you'll earn something on the side. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and recommend it to others. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel. AI. Now you know.